1213. You are on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Our guests today are George Brown, the two and a half, for, uh, formerly from Brooklyn, and the John Richards. Uh, and are you in London? I know you're in England. Are you in London? I'm, I'm on the coast, south of London, about 50 miles due south. Okay. Well, cool. That's a lot of geography. Welcome. I'm sure Americans yep. will uh -huh. get some yeah. citations in the future, figure out what right. that means. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstitions. If you think you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not. Here in Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us. So surely you've got quite a few in your town. We'll talk more about our group after the mid-show break. Uh, Wombat, what's our topic today? Are atheists better Christians than Christians? Which I think is very interesting. So I think before we go in, into a topic, I want to do a quick round table. John Richards, I love all that water you're drinking. We should give you a medal for it. We'll call it a water medal. <laughs> this, uh -huh. is, this is not water. This is <laughs> That's so scary when he says it. <laughs> it's water. water. It's vodka. Water. It's water. <laughs> That's right. You got it. <laughs> it's water, lad. It's water. You just drink it. That's it. All right. Anyway, uh, John Richards, how have you been? It, everything's fine here. Thank you. And I've got even more schemes that I can get going. Atheists with schemes. That's not a thing that you ever hear the two in tandem together. <laughs> We, we have no schemes. We have anti-schemes. No schemes. <laughs> we have anti-schemes. Very good. Uh, Larry Richards, how have you been, my friend? Uh, Larry Richards? I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Larry Rhodes. Larry Rhodes. Yeah, getting, no, like I no, said, I just fine. got my glasses, but they're still a little dirty. What's going on? Yeah, yeah no, I'm fine. Uh, just working. Uh, I've worked day to, you know, day, to day nowadays uh, at home, from home. I'm a data analyst. Yeah, are you enjoying for, that grind again? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, it's it's like the perfect job. I sit at my computer. I, I work on uh, anti money laundering issues, and nobody bothers nice. me. So nice, nice. Like the perfect job. Okay. Um. So and that and playing games, computer games. I'm still right in the middle of of uh, Skyrim, and okay. thoroughly enjoying it on the Quest Two. Help me out now. Um, let's see how deep in the rabbit hole we can get real quick. What what's your race in Skyrim? I'm an elf, a blood, a dark elf. You're a dark Blood elf. elf. Okay, yeah. male, male or female, if I can quickly ask? Oh, male. I'm a okay. mage, fire mage. And like, what's the major quest that you've completed? Are you completing all of them? Or are you like specifically choosing, I'm going to be the oh, I'm wanting guy. to get to, I'm a, I'm a level 21, almost to 22. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm wanting to get to the, uh, oh, the uh, <laughs> vampire on the <laughs> so I So I also can become a vampire. You uh, want to become before. a vampire. Yeah, oh, it's very powerful. Very and cool. uh, mm -hmm. and uh, if I can do that, then I'll, I'll be able to handle pretty much any battle. Listen, I can tell you right now in Skyrim, they make no proclivities about subjugating you to one class or the other. You can be a werewolf oh, and yeah. a vampire and a werebear oh, good. Good. and a magician good. and a and a hero. I look forward and an to assassin. all of that. You can do yeah. anything you want. It's crazy. You Very immersive game. Free. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. uh, George Brown, we're going to get to you too, but I just saw... Uh, so we can also introduce the show, but I just saw Dread Pirate Higgs. Dread, are you here? Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Dread, how have you been, my friend? Ahoy, I've been doing well. Very cool. I'm actually uh, working. I'm working right now, so I'm sitting in my car. Do you have time for a quick not, invocation? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You bet. you bet. Let's rock one out real quick. Shall we do it now? Yeah. Yeah, we're in. All right. We're in. <laughs> Our noodly lord, who art in a colander. Al dante be thy noodles, thy blood be rum, thy sauce be yum, with meat as it is with vegetables. Give us this day our garlic bread, and forgive us our cussing as we forgive those who cuss against us. And lead us not into, into ketoism, mm. but deliver us some carbs. For thine are the meatballs and the sauces and the grog, whenever and ever. Rum. Amen. Does the newly horror have any uh, biases against zucchini noodles? Because they're actually pretty darn good. Uh, no, no biases against zucchini. All things are good under creation. Wonderful, 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 yeah. wonderful. Yeah. 
All right, George Brown, how you doing? How you doing? Well, every time every time you ask me that question, I cannot remember. <laughs> so, uh, as as a lead into today's topic, I will tell a little tiny story. Okay. Um, my neighbor who attends the mothership of all the Baptist churches here in this town, uh, of which there are 167 official Baptist wow. churches, wow. and um, then another 37 unofficial Baptist churches, and then the ones that I call the Baptoid churches, you know, the spinoffs. Sure. Um, <clears throat> it's where they uh, dip uh, your kids in orange juice, right? <laughs> So she was talking with me and she said uh, she was talking about heaven and hell. And I made a face. <laughs> I just made a face. And I, that goes and well on radio. I allowed, I allowed that I don't, I don't just get heaven or hell whatsoever. I mean, it's just, it's, it's out of my orbit. And then her, her response to that was, do you hate Jesus? Mm. Which to which I was just totally incredulous. I mean, I just, what is this? What planet am I on? You know. So uh, out of that came this question: Are we atheists better Christians than the Christians? And there came. There's where my topic came from. How about we roundtable it? I know we we'll all have some awesome. interesting points of views on this. Are atheists better Christians than Christians? Um, I'm going to throw this up to Dredd since you're our newest guest. What do you think on the idea? Well, you know, I, I, I really love the question. It's very provocative, mm -hmm. but um, I think it's important uh, right out of the gate to define what we mean by Christians so that I love it. we establish right. a standard uh, by which we can measure up. That's a very Dredd-like answer. Why don't you define for you what it means? <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. I, I I guess there's the idea of doing good in the world and loving all people and, and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. is probably a very, you know, sort of nebulous way of tracking what Christian, you know, what a Christian ideally is. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, uh, you know, as an individual, I, I wouldn't say that I'm a Christian because I certainly don't love everyone. Uh, sure. Just because uh, I certainly don't turn the other cheek at every occasion, just because. Right. There's rotten um, apples in that. So, bill. yeah. So, you know, I I guess everybody has a different idea of what uh, being a true Christian is. It's like being a true Scotsman, right? Right. So, um, what does it mean to you? Like, if you don't know, that's totally fine. But, like, um, in your opinion, based on the definition that you have for Christian, just for you, just for you, uh, do you think? As a as a Pasifarian, as a humanist, you you closely more closely align with your ideals and practice than a, a Christian by your definition. Well, I would I would believe so, and I think that's partly because uh, Pasifarians are self defined. Interesting. So, you know, okay, um, okay, a bit more yeah, objective. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Larry, not Richards Rhodes. Quote, open quotation point, doubter five, close quotation point. Now I can see it clearly, my friend. Listen, Larry, what do you think? Are atheists better Christians than Christians? Well, um, to me, Christians are as Christians do. And, and, <laughs> nice. and that's the problem. Uh, most of the Christians yeah. that we as see. As the famous the guy with suspenders are, also said in a movie. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah they, uh, anyway, for example, the KKK is a Christian organization. Right. Uh, Christians claim to practice unconditional love for their fellow man. But when it comes right down to it, um, we find that many, and I'm not saying all, but quite a few of the most vocal public Christians that we, we uh, encounter, like politicians, preachers, etc., cetera, right. who wear their Christianity on their sleeve, right. turn out to be more homophobic or racist or sexist uh and it's i'd like to say that no we're not more christian than them and i'm proud of that mm -hmm. however if we're talking about the claims of christianity uh condition unconditional love for a fellow man i think we come closer to the mark than they do okay very well said i can't even top that john richards your thoughts on this are atheists better christians than christians well the guys who've already spoken are absolutely right. First of all, 
we don't know what is meant by being Christian. Right. There's so many different flavors of Christianity, mm. uh, and some of them are quite weird. I mean, there's um, Christian scientists who do not permit medication. Right. They think prayer does the job, and so very often they die from preventable diseases. So true. Right. Very yeah. true. So I, I, I don't want to be better than that in in the sense of you know more more weird more more so <laughs> you know indeed but uh, and and so they, they what a lot of christians do is they cherry pick the things that that are nice that they would like to aspire to right and and then my thought is well you don't own that you know right. Right. all these all these virtues are part of being human these mm. are we, we've evolved to be empathic towards each other and to treat each other in the way that we would like to be treated. That's so it's, it's very it, simple to see that because if we, we were if we were inclined to kill each other from birth, we wouldn't have societies that were as they are today, like we would fall apart. So like by virtue of the fact that we are social and we do tend to be nice to each other, we're able well, to have this right now. Indeed. So in that respect, I think that atheists are very likely to be at least equal or better than Christians, mm -hmm. if that's the yardstick that we're choosing to measure by. That's our metric. But then another aspect of it is business. You see, Christianity seems to me to be a business. And some Christians, some self-proclaimed Christians, are very good at it. I mean, I'm thinking of the the televangelists i'm thinking of the uh, prosperity gospelists you know they make themselves fortunes and they they buy another personal jet aircraft <laughs> whenever they need and some of them have got four there was one who died recently i think he's nigerian but spent a lot of time in the us and he's got four personal private jets so if being a Christian means being a good businessman. I'm afraid I'm not to it. <laughs> nice. So, uh, Dred, you had your hand yeah, up. Yeah, well, I was going to say, in one respect, I think atheists are, are better than uh, Christians in that we have a greater capacity to be humble. Um, <laughs> We're know, the most humble? Hu is that <laughs> humility, of course, is, uh, is, a, um, is something that Christians claim to be. But of course, that is, you know, definitionally impossible, because if you're uh, under the wing of an omnipotent being that mm. you can hardly be humble about it. Right. Um, so I that's I think is an important, uh, uh, you know, an important behavior that uh, atheists, I think, are tend to be a little better at. Dread, I think I see what you're saying, like the good works of atheists are done out of virtue of like the community and just yep. sense of well-being of the environment that they're in not because they're yep. trying to appease a god who they think has their side and purview and exactly right? yeah yeah and, and dread can, can yeah I, mm -hmm. can I get... following following up on on what dread pirate ah, just okay. said I, I have a confession to make which is that i used to be an egotist but now i'm perfect <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. all right john that's what I was that's what I was going to pick up on because <laughs> See, if you were drinking the water and yes. getting your water medals, you would have yes. been a lot better with your water medals. That's all I'm saying. Well, I, I just wanted to say to Dredd that obviously he's talking in general terms about being humble, because a person who proclaims himself as being humble isn't humble. Right, right. Yes, of course. You no, know, listen, I will. I, I thought about that even. I know it's weird to call yourself humble because it seems like contradictory, but there are a lot of things you can call yourself that wouldn't fall into the purview of humility, right? Like you can say, I'm the best, I'm the strongest, I'm the smartest. But to recognize that you are humble is, is, is valid, I think. And it's just a question of, are you practicing it? It's not, you can say whatever you right. want and you can recognize, hey, I actually have some pretty good humility here. I can make fun of myself. I can, <clears throat> I can make good jokes. But am I behaving humble? And that's that is so call yourself humble if you are humble, but behave so as well, because that's what's the true distinction. And, yeah. And it's about exercising humility. Mm. So not being humble as an end goal or as a as a thing, but as an as an exercise, as a practice. Right. 
I also feel like there is an aspect of personal accountability that comes with Christianity, where the idea is if I have, if I simply do the game plan that God gives me, I don't have to hold myself accountable to other people. Mm -hmm. So if I Mm -hmm. fault someone, I can praise my God or apologize to my God. I don't have to apologize to them. If I need to serve time in charity or, or a volunteer shelter, I can just give money to the church or pray to my God and ask him to take care of it for me. Like there are a lot of scenarios where by agency of appeasing to the supernatural, you get the same feeling that you are helping out your community, but you're actually doing nothing because all the prayers right. in the world won't, right. you know, fill coffers of a, a charity organization. Like all the prayers in the world won't make sick people healthy again. In fact, yeah. prayer as Larry would easily point out, can actually put more pressure on someone who's being prayed for to get healthy and actually make them yeah. get more sick over time. We've demonstrated yeah. Yeah. that. That, that, study that, that, uh, that study was a very good mm-hmm. demonstration of that. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was a uh, classic by MIT. So I would also say yeah. this, in the virtue of, do I feel like I'm a better Christian than Christians? Um, yeah, it does depend on the definition, but I also have the same confidence that I don't think Christians own any of the good virtues that they espouse or claim to have and even if they did i feel like it's so tainted by the fact that they have this unquestionably unmoral god you know controlling all of those virtues that i Mm -hmm. wouldn't even want to appease that right following his rulings so i am proud in my sense to not be a christian and i'm proud to be a worse christian than christians and i'll also throw this out too i think today christians are worse Christians than Christians, particularly like 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 100 years ago. Because as we become more of an interconnected society, we realize that people are different, which is not something that Christianity was ever particularly suited well for. We understand that Mm -hmm. people have different needs, that there's different ways of communication, that empathy needs to exist, that tolerance, compromises, all of these things are valuable things in a healthy society. And this dogmatic standpoint of us versus them doesn't evolve to the standard that we're living at now and because of that the christians that we have now if even if you look in the congregations are well integrated they have females on the staff they 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 sometimes support at pride parades larry and i were at one and there was like group parading in front of us and we're like what the hell are these guys doing here you should be the people with the signs on this on the side of the road being like you guys are going to hell at least they're citing the holy books but like you have them on both sides now if anything christians (laughs) today are worse christians now than they ever have been for the better i think it's for the better honestly i think the fact if we can all become worse christians the world will benefit from it that's my yeah if I'm, if I may uh, add something, I I've been reading um, Jean-Paul Sartre's uh, "Being in Nothingness," and one thing that I found entirely enlightening was the idea that um, there are no narratives in life. Mm-hmm. Um, we as humans are are natural storytellers and are compelled to tell stories and hear stories, and 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 that gives essentially meaning to our lives, but in the in the in the live game like in the in, in living life there is no there is no story it's it's just one thing happens after another after another after another christians however believe that they do have the end already figured out right and so they've essentially constructed a narrative and that is the 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 guide for their life that the, the conclusion of their life is already determined. And so that um, they don't live life authentically, you know, in, in accordance with what Jean-Paul was saying. Um, and that uh, it's a uh, acting in bad faith. It's mm. pretending to be something in order to achieve the conclusion you've already right. come up with for your yeah. life. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, as opposed to living authentically, which is being. Mm. And uh, I just, I've, I've just found this just completely fascinating and enlightening. Very, Larry, what's, what, what was your uh, thoughts on it? Well, uh, you mentioned a little while ago that the motivation uh, is a great um, teller, uh, tell on these things. Like you mentioned, a grant, they do good to aggrandize God, not necessarily for doing good per se. Right. Uh, but there's also the, the fear of punishment. Uh, mm-hmm. avoiding hell, oh. you know, doing good in order to appease the God and, and uh, avoid hell. And one thing I'd like to point out is that when they do that, it's not morality. 
it's obedience. Right. Morality is something quite different. It's knowing the best thing to do for a particular situation. And it's something that you carry within you. It's something that you determine at the time uh, that a crisis uh, arises, not yeah, just situational. Follow, following a list of rules. Yeah, right. it's the equivalent of it is if you shine, if you go into a really bad apartment, I've been, I've lived in bad apartments too, but if you shine a flashlight in a kitchen and the cockroaches skitter away, they're <laughs> avoiding punishment. That is not mm. morality. That's animals <laughs> trying to avoid That's right. trouble. And right. when a when a Christian does something only because they have a fear of going to hell or they fear of suffering the wrath of God, that yeah. is no different than shining a flashlight on a cockroach and watching it skitter out. It's not yeah. morality. It's obedience right. or it's it's just actions through fear. You're and, it's but, reactionary. Yeah. 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 And morality, in fact, is not a, a codified set of rules of how you're not supposed to steal or think about someone else's wife or right. steal things and st or whatever you want to call it. or steal someone else's land who's of a different religion because they're mm -hmm. dirty people it's a system of 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 ethics you know it's a system of what do we want as a society what are morales that we can set up to get those things that we want and let's look at this rule set and change it as needed and as necessary until we have a more optimized way to get these things that we want it's a very thoughtful and very nuanced system. And it's not as easy as just saying, hey, don't hit people. It's like, don't hit people because you don't want to get hit. And I think it benefits everybody if we don't get hit, right? Mm -hmm. Some thought behind it. And we can do all these things so automatically that we take it for granted. But it's really, really important that we realize that it's a nuanced, systematic approach to learning how to treat other yes. people well. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And that's, it. you know, and, you know, John Locke and the social contract uh, really helped you know, sort of solidify that uh, yeah. in many respects is that it is to our mutual benefit that right. we curtail our passions, our desires, our wants uh, in the interest that uh, we all become better for it. You know what I mean? It's like the tyranny of the common or the tragedy of the common. You can't keep putting uh, your, you can't keep putting more cows on the on the common field because if everyone does that well you have no you have right. a lot of cows in no field right right right, um, right so yeah so i think uh and this is where i think it it went very badly in in the canada protests there uh you know every the trucker convoy and all that kind of stuff where everyone's declaring you know the right to freedom and that's what canada stands for and blah 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 and let's blockade but their very actions and activities were doing the things that they were protesting against. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, they were blocking other people's freedoms. They were, you know, harming, injuring the economy and all in the interests of proclaiming the freedom to have a free economy and to protest, <laughs> which is, uh, you know, very, um, very contradictory. Larry. And very self-defeating, right? So very mm -hmm. self-defeating. So. Yeah. yeah, I'd just like to go off on what uh, he was saying uh, about don't do the things that you want to do. Don't do the things that make you feel good uh, if it har harms other people. Right. right. Uh, because there's no reason not to do the things that you want to do, the things that make you feel good, the things you enjoy. Uh, if they're not harming you or society or anybody else right. now to say, I'm not going to do this thing because it, it, it harms or offends an invisible deity yeah. or an invisible yeah. um, personage that, you know, that's sitting off to the side and may or may not exist. That's no grounds to curtail your own enjoyment of life. Right. Right. So, like not eating pig. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Or being homosexual, if that's the way you're right, born. Right, right, yeah, right. yeah, exactly. You know, or even asexual, who cares? Or I, I want to eat my bacon, man. Right, you know, right. Fornicating, as it were. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Fornication yeah. offends God. Well, if there's no God, there's no it's offense. so bizarre that he has a stance yeah. on that, of all things. Right. Like, what else are you going to do in the desert, right? Like, exactly. Just, I mean, what, why are you telling people <laughs> and, that? And it's such a double standard, yeah. because a man can do it. but a woman Where do you go to the desert for if it's not to fornicate, right? Right? Like, why make that a bad thing? And bacon, what is this religion, guys? What are we doing here? Uh, I want to throw this out, too. Uh, just a fine point on the point that Larry was making. It's we. It's not just doing things that benefit us the most. It's also reducing harm, but more importantly, needless harm, 
right? Because doctors can make incisions and that's harmful to an extent. But the overall benefit is that you'll get more health from the work that they do. But it's the needless harm. It's just people stabbing people with scalpels on the sidewalk. Like uh -huh. you wouldn't want that, right? You wouldn't want people to needlessly die like how they are in Ukraine right now. Like whatever we can do to reduce needless harm is like the true benefit of a of a uh, optimal society, right? Yeah. And there yeah. and there might be people who do workouts where their muscles get bigger and they're tearing the muscle fibers. They want to do that and they have a purpose for it. But don't don't go out and like rip people's arms off. Like that's needless. We don't yeah, need yeah. to do that. We can do whatever we can to reduce it. I also I, want I was to gonna oh sorry go on go on ahead. go on Jed. No I well I was just gonna say that um uh you know getting back to our original topic about atheists sure. being better than Christians um is that our justifications for our behaviors are more considered. Um, yes. We don't just rely on what a book tells us or what our religious leaders tell us right. is a good idea for doing such and such. Right. Uh, we have to think about these things as atheists or as pastafarians, and and that brings it closer to us as uh, being responsible for the outcomes of our actions and our thoughts and our behaviors. There's no fear of hell as far as I'm aware in atheists. Uh, and I'm almost going to say that as a weird blanket statement. I feel very weird yeah. saying that objectively. Though, but... though in Pastafarian hell where the bear is stale and the, uh, the strippers have STDs, we would like <laughs> to avoid that. We, we try to, uh, you know, modify our behaviors for the good stuff. George, what's up? Well, I'm, you know, John and I were raised as atheists and, mm. um, I almost don't feel qualified to say very much in this conversation because unlike the rest of you, I was not brought up Christian. It's like I'm, I'm two degrees removed because I come out of a Jewish heritage and was raised atheist. So uh, I'm, I'm just enjoying sitting here and listening to you guys. Who who have the direct experience, you know, who who were indoctrinated from but, an early but George, age. I, I would I would uh, counter that you in your lifetime have encountered Christians who have made oh, it yes. very clear, yeah, what they believe and and why they behave the the way they do. So it's not Absolutely. like you're 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 raised in a vacuum. That's correct. That's correct. And and I and I have been just you know like wondering at it, um, almost in disbelief. A yes. lot of the time, it, it, uh, like I, I just don't get it. You well know? said. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> you know it. So you know it. I mean, the the one thing that, that keeps on coming to me, which is something I've mentioned here before, is 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 the um, I guess the word is hypocrisy. You know, when when people are telling me Jesus is love, and the, you know, I'm I'm seeing all just this suspicion and hatred and the tolerance and racism and ah, you know, all this. Hatred that comes out of these people against people who are different than them. I, I just right get it. Mm -hmm. Anathema. I don't get it, you know. Yeah. But but yeah. I do get it because right. I've been doing sure. a lot of armchair psychology study, and I've you know come across some very interesting things that pertain to the prevailing culture around me where I live. Yeah. It's not like <laughs> where you live. Hour, no. Well, we'll get the bottom of the hour. Let's see if we can get back to this topic right after our break. Please stay tuned here for the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dr. Five and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Just take a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002, so we're in our 20th year. We have over 1,000 members, and we have weekly in-person meetings in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Tap Room in Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top tables in the center of the establishment, and on a pretty day, you can find us out on the deck, or split between the two. We're usually the loudest and happiest group there. We also have Tuesday evening Zoom meetups. If you'd like to join us there, email us at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or let's chat se at gmail.com for the link to join us. You'll also find us on Facebook, meetup.com or knoxvilleatheist.org, which is our website, or just Google Knoxville Atheist and you'll find us. By the way, 
If you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and look for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one. Start Start one. one. All right. Wombat, where were we? Where were we? So uh, just some quick listener comments. I love Avatar says, I love FSM. I imagine that stands for Flying Spaghetti Monster. Data Strader, yep. thank you again for all the comments. We also have, uh, I got a lot of comments on some older SE videos and I'm trying to like filter them out just a little bit. Ah, uh, as an atheist, I also love this show. Great solid production values. I remember when you guys were only on WinApp. Thank you, uh, <laughs> Anonymous. And then Matthew T also says, helpful video. I appreciate the uh, discussion. Thank you guys so much for all your comments. Feel free to leave more and uh, we'll go right back into the topic. Uh, John Richards, we left you with some hanging points. What's up? Well, a lot has gone under the water, uh, gone under the bridge. Water has <laughs> gone under the bridge. <laughs> okay, You've water under the bridge, raising... got it. Yeah. <laughs> You've been raising a lot of uh, topics that I want to react to. So I don't know where to start, really, but I'm not going to let the fact that I wasn't indoctrinated mm. stop me from commenting. <laughs> Sorry, right, good George. Point. Good Sorry, point. George. Yeah. Yeah. I've got opinions. <laughs> 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 I'm going to broadcast them. <laughs> so often when I've when I have on the rare occasions when I have visited a church or seen on TV some worshippers in a mosque, for example, I felt it's very similar for me to going to the zoo. You know, I'm I'm looking at the behavior of these people. Oh, that's bizarre. <laughs> you you think of it as a zoo because you were not you weren't raised atheist. I see it as the twilight zone because I was like, that was me just yeah. a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. it's very yeah. alarming. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Well, I don't envy you that, Ty, mm. I'm afraid. Yeah. So a couple of other things. Ukraine was mentioned, and of course. Patriarch Kirill, who is the leader of the Russian branch of the Russian Orthodox Church, he has characterized the war as a holy war, effectively, because mm. it's purging gay pride events, which and he claims politics. are going on in, uh, in Ukraine. And right. so it's against homosexual sin. This is what the Russian... The, Putin's war is is doing it's saving us from homosexual sin <laughs> right. yeah it's very uh, bizarre hmm. yeah absolutely and, and the other thing is that we started out by saying we don't know what being Christian is so it's difficult to decide whether we are better Christians than than Christians are but let's take an example if being Christian means following the commandments you know, that's a reasonable assumption. They're rubbish anyway. I mean, the first five of them are just about glorifying the religion. We and don't the get other 350 them. aren't that good either. I'm going to be honest <laughs> no, with you. They're pretty bad across the board. So, uh, I'm sure I could construct a better list of commandments, and there'll probably only be three. <laughs> and and, and the, 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 that might make me a better Christian than a Christian. I, I have no idea what that means. Mm. But the, the, the thing is that um, nothing is absolute. You can't say that it's always and forever wrong to do any action, because of course it always depends on the circumstances. And so, so it, all actions are contingent rather than yes. necessary or essential. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you've got to take into account each individual incident and make a judgment based on that rather than some blanket rule. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I want to also throw out something on a uh, comment from the first half of the show with John Paul Satter uh, referring to there is no narrative. And yeah. there's a Nietzsche-like interpretation of saying, well, life is meaningless, so there's no purpose or there's no meaning. I don't think there's another interpretation of what Sadra was saying, and I think it's more true. It's that his point is dogma is not substantial. And the fact that it exists is a demonstration that anybody can make it. Therefore, you are free. To, you have the freedom to make your own rules. You can write your own right. story. Yes. And yeah. for those Absolutely. who believe in a pre-prescribed dogma, they are faulting an innate ability that they have. And the consequences of that is obedience with the grandeur 
of morality and self-thought and critical thinking. It's yeah. like, no, you, you forsook your best talent, something that you uniquely are capable of doing. And that is building yeah. a narrative because there yeah. is no narrative yeah. for you. Anyway, right. John, John Richards, uh, what do you think? I, I want my hand is up next. Oh, <laughs> okay. after, after John, after after John. John. Join, join the queue. I want to come yeah. back on the Sartre thing as well, because mm. the trouble with the, the statement that there is no, there's no narrative is mm. looking back, there is an appearance of there having been a narrative mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because everything has developed from very simple beginnings whether you're looking at the cosmos or, or biology, the evolution of uh, the diversity of life. Right. But what there isn't is a plan going forward. Right, right. So, right. so although looking back, there appears to be a, a narrative historically, it wasn't intended, you know, it just happened. And then looking forward, we have no idea where the journey's going. Yeah. Well, this is uh, where, it, yeah, this is where, uh, you know, again, referring to Sartre's um, in nature, uh, uh, essence precedes existence, whereas in humans, existence precedes essence. So that means we are essentially free. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that is how our freedom is derived, is that we exist before our essence and our essence determines uh the directions in which in the choices that we make right george i'd just like to make a, a little comment about uh the difference between uh john's upbringing and my upbringing we we are both raised atheists but uh <clears throat> john's country has an official religion my, my country does not have an official religion. Not only that, but not on paper. I come from New York, uh, New York City, which was founded for money. Mm. I mean, it, it, was a, um, it was a commercial colony of, of Holland. You know, the, I forget the Dutch East India Company, or some Dutch West India Company, whatever. Uh, the, the famous man... Um, uh, governor of New York, in fact, P Peter Stuyvesant, was simply a middle-level corporate manager. Mm. And when the when the British and the Dutch decided to change to trade some territories, he just went off to some other colony and, you know, managed that. <laughs> so, uh, New York just has continued that way. There is no official religion in New York yeah. City. It, it mm. simply has more Catholics than anything mm. else. Yeah. So we we, we have a, a different context. Sure, you and I, John. Sure, sure. Yeah, 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 we do. But I'd like to make a, distant, a difference between theory and practice. <laughs> we have theoretically an established church. In practice, no, we don't. <laughs> right, right. And I know. And that's such an interesting, th right? that's such an interesting thing, because the most extreme countries in Europe that I can think of, the most Catholic in the past, let's say, yeah. I'm going to um, fantasize that these would be France and, and um, Italy. And I left out somebody, I can't remember who it is, um, have gone, they flipped in the opposite direction, mm. I think. Mm. So that they, they have an official religion in a way, but like, like you said, John, it, it, it's like the, 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 the action on the ground is exactly the opposite. Yes, right. Yes. And we're here in the United States. Meanwhile, we're, we're stuck with the worst yes, of it. Yes, let's, yes. let's go to Larry. Mm. Mm. Yes, I was just going to say that whether you were raised in the Christian religion or not, because of Christian outreach, which is a lot and perpetually ongoing, mm. few of us are untouched by it. Uh, they are incorporated in many laws, both local and federal yes right. which we have to obey mm. yes and i and i was going to yeah essentially expound on that is that while you know no one would openly declare in canada like you don't hear often anyone say that um uh that uh, canada has a uh, state religion it is a de facto state religion mm. and mm. because uh you know the laws you know, religiosity to a certain extent is ensconced in, in the laws 
of the land. Um, that's certainly something that pastoralians struggle against when they're just dealing with people that um, essentially are either intent or bigoted towards uh, non sort of traditional religious uh, um, ideas or organizations. Uh, you know, if uh, if you walk to uh, so, so say I were to walk into the driver's licensing bureau with a turban. Let's say that happened. Yeah. Okay. Say that happened. Say that happened next week when I go to get my picture taken with a turban. Right. What do you think is going to happen? And this is all based on. on what, yep. It's going to be based on the color voice. of my skin or right. my ethnic origin. Right. And they'll say, well, we don't believe you. Well, prove it. Hmm. You know, you know, that that will be my claim, because that's that's how frustrated I've been getting right, with all this. Right. There you operate but, uh, with some sort of litmus test that determines whether or not you genuinely yeah, hold a religious. Belief, exactly. Which what the exactly. And, right. and that's why I say you know, that's why I make the claim that, you know, uh, d despite, you know, there being no overt claim that uh, Canada has a state religion. We right. do have a de facto state religion. That's you at least have the prejudices, which in yeah. a sense yeah. is what a lot of religions are in a set. It's a set of yeah. prejudices. John. Exactly. Yeah, well, Larry mentioned outreach. And the latest example of that, you know, at the moment, we've got millions, literally millions of people, refugees leaving Ukraine and going over the border into Poland. Right. And what happens? They get met by... Christian American Christian missionaries oh, no. proclaiming <laughs> that you've got to adopt, you've got to access Speaking of cockroaches, right? Speaking, of <laughs> you, you, yeah. you've, got, you, you've got to love Jesus, and then your life will be better. Yeah, it's these... almost. Oh my gosh, that makes me upset. It's almost like crack dealers hanging out outside of a rehab center and yeah. watching people walk out with a completion certificate, being like, "Listen, yeah, I got yeah. a deal for you. Listen, I'll give you." Yeah, something. yeah. First one's free. Yeah, yeah. First one's free. Yeah, yeah, and these are mothers with their babies in their arms whose home has just been bombed. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Mm. In no context yeah. whatsoever, aside from just, mm. and for their sake, they're not even doing it for the, the, the refugee. They're doing it so they can win points with St. Yes. Peter, whoever is yeah. letting people in at the Golden Gates. And yes. then they'd be, hey, I did save those refugees. And they go back home. They, you know, they're sure they're either yes. their selfies yeah. or their religious selfies, which is them praying to God, being like, look at all this good stuff I did for you. Yeah. It's really important. exactly. Yeah. Uh, I did want to bring this up. So, uh, George, I think you had the best comment. Sorry, George, I have opinions. John Rich, John Rich's opinion. John, I think you had the best comment. But you also brought up the idea of Christianity sort of being like a zoo for people who've not been indoctrinated growing up. Yeah. And I brought up the contrast where if you had grown up, it's like an episode of The Twilight Zone. An episode yeah. being where you go to the zoo, you see an elephant, you know you're not an elephant, you're there to just see some elephants, great, you see a giraffe, great. Then you see you at 20, right? And maybe it's everybody else looking at you and they're like, oh, look at him, he's praying. And you're like, oh, everybody's looking at me. That's, that's kind of bizarre. And maybe yeah. that person doesn't look exactly like you, maybe they have a different name, but you see it and you see yourself in it. And yes. then you go to another scene where it's, you're giving out money to the church or you're arguing with people and you have a Jesus, I love Jesus uh, lanyard around your chain and you're getting very passionate about why certain cartoons shouldn't be on TV because they're not good for kids because yes, they yes. espouse, you know, virtues that shouldn't be part of it. And you're like, oh, that was me. I feel really uncomfortable about this. That's what life is like sometimes for people who've had the trauma yeah. of being indoctrinated, free themselves from it and have to live in a world where it's like, I easily could be you if I didn't ask myself a series of questions and was honest with myself. And yeah. it's a struggle to lose that fear and it's a struggle to learn how to think critically. It's not easy, but oftentimes the things that are convenient for you aren't the best for you or have your best interests. Yeah. And I find well, a deep convenience with Christianity and religion as a whole. Anyway. What's happened, like, uh, what's happened, Ty, is you've escaped. You're, you're mm. an animal that's got out of the zoo. <laughs> so, I don't feel like I escaped. Now I feel like I finally got back to my natural habitat. 
I feel right. like someone yeah. went to Africa, pulled out a zebra and dropped him off in the middle of New York to put like in a platform. And he and he learned how to dance and juggle on a on a, a, a beach balloon. And then finally he figured out his way Madagascar style or Madagascar yeah. too, because that's one way to go back to Africa. <clears throat> he went, goes back to the wild. He's like, oh my gosh, guys, I never want to see a, a clown again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, we the <laughs> so if it's any consolation, I hmm. won't be coming back to gulp at you in your zoo anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, well, uh, no. yeah, I, I was just wondering, uh, do we do a better job at simply laughing at ourselves? Hmm. And is there some good that we get out of it? I think so. I think so. I think. And there again, it, uh, there again, it's humility, right? Right. Humility right. is being able to sort of chuckle at yourself and not take yourself so seriously. Exactly. Yeah. A yeah. lot of paths for mm-hmm. atheism in America is realizing you were wrong about something, and I think mm-hmm. that's a huge yep. aspect to it. Yeah. And so I think that is a humility uh, component. It is humility in practice, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm voting for that. My thumbs up. <laughs> I'm so humble. <laughs> and again, you can call yourself humble. There's nothing wrong with it. It's something you demonstrate with practice and you can you can just put a label on it. I did mm-hmm. want to I wanted to mention a weird point about our own or about our Moscow dictator in, in, in chief. Uh, there is, in fact, a war on religious bias. Uh, there is a war from his perspective on gender policies. And I think recently, um, I think this was as early as last Friday. Uh, Putin was in a press conference where he was saying, you know, the other countries of the world have tried to cancel Russia, just like J.K. Rowling was canceled for her views that she espoused on Twitter. And then J.K. Rowling was like, I don't need a Russian dictator to say I'm on his side. Let me let me clear this out. And so, uh, John, not to put you on the spot, but as a resident UK, are you familiar with that story? Uh, it doesn't ring a big bell at the moment. Okay, okay. I thought it was a funny thing in two aspects. One, that J.K. Rowling's like, geez, I really do need to change my opinions on certain things. <laughs> you know, Putin's trying to be like, yeah, and she's with us. And she, then the second thing... Yeah, yeah, uh, it's come to me now. Yeah, she's been very badly treated by the woke crowd. And mm. and she's, she's amused, I think, that uh, now um, they're trying to push her into the same category as Putin. Mm. And then the second thing is gender politics being a thing that would be uttered by a person who's at war with another country as a justified reason, straight face, justified reason to actually invade. It's like, well, they have gender policies that I don't agree with. And that's why we're launching these hypersonic missiles at their residencies and schools and hospitals and and suburban areas. It's like, whoa, Mm -hmm. if there was ever like a crazy lack of judgment, by, by well, you know, official. isn't it really just a, 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 a you know, a, a carry forward of Trump's, you know, sort of uh, reasoning? I mean, it's it's just craziness, isn't it? Mm. I mean, he just he, he would just say things and just expect people to believe them. And Putin's just taking a, taking his form and, and carrying it on, it seems like. Right, right, right. And well, you know, I think they're both they're both two peas in the same pod. I, yeah, I, don't know. I would agree for sure. But right. but um, it's an interesting phenomenon, um, uh, Dread Pirate. I, I think um, you know I've wondered about this uh, for a long time. Is, is that why a man can tell something which is such an obvious lie, and then everybody just believes it? Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm puzzled. By, by this yes absolutely i also want to throw this out too if you had three let's keep it simple we've had trump who was parading in front of a church with a bible upside down right yes and right we could right. say to ourselves that's probably not a guy who really even understands the religious tendencies and or the intricacies of that book and is actually a horrible you know in terms of treating other people person as well as policies as well but then you also have biden who very very ardently does believe in Catholicism. And yet Mm -hmm. you also have a guy who supports abortion rights for women and and does things that Catholic uh, uh, gay privileges, uh, things that the Catholic Church is very staunchly against. And so this is a guy who genuinely does believe in that God, yet when he's in a capacity where he's basically an authoritarian or, or a position of power is amenable to the idea that he's overseeing the the a very diverse population. And making efforts to support, you know, policies that 
basically reduce needless harm and not just advance his own. Yeah. yeah. Whereas with Trump, it's almost the exact opposite. A guy who doesn't believe in that book, a guy who would, a lot of Christians would say <clears throat> in some cases isn't Christian, right? But yet is actually doing some meaningful harm to minority groups, people who don't have as much privilege as him and lasting mm -hmm. damage to the point where you see mobs of people <laughs> rushing through the Capitol building, killing police officers. And, right. And, and, I, you know, yeah, so is, and I, is, I, is, uh, uh, is Biden a better Christian than the Pope? Interesting. We can handle that maybe later, but that's a good question. Dred, what would you think? Well, I, w I was just thinking that, um, you know, Biden is a better politician than Trump is, right? Right. Um, Trump was more concerned with his ideas, his thoughts, his beliefs. His family. And didn't really care about what other people thought. And so conducted himself in such a way as like, if this is what I want, this is what I want. I don't care what you have to say about it. Uh, just go away and leave me alone because I'm going to do it. I'm Biden, yeah. Biden has clearly a, a set of core beliefs, but must be amenable because he's a politician. In order to be a successful politician, he must amend or be amenable to the interests uh, and the desires of the, the body politic, right? And, and if we looked at that, which one's behaving more godly? Because Trump very much has the idea of my way or the highway, and if not, I'm going to mow you down. And that is very much the Christian God's motives of operandi throughout yes, yes. the entirety of the Bible. Whereas God yeah. never supplicates to the idea of what his disciples or his followers want. And that is exactly yeah. what Biden is doing. And we can see the benefit of it compared <clears> to <throat> Uh, uh, absolute dogmatic, crazy authoritarian, and then the worst yeah. case. So on Putin. that, on that, I say Trump is a better Christian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can I just can I just up. clear something up here? John Richards, did, what's up? Did Trump really hold the Bible upside down, or was? Oh that yeah, a... it's some pictures. Yeah, get it, give it. Oh images. yeah. yeah it, it wasn't. Boy. It wasn't a Photoshop. <laughs> no, it's unfortunate. So, well, it you know what that means? Holding the cross upside down. <laughs> He's the Antichrist. <laughs> oh there's always a narrative there's always a sneaky yeah, yeah. narrative anyway, we're getting closer to the bottom of, or uh getting ready to wrap up the show george did you have final thoughts did we feel do you feel like your questions on whether atheists are better christians than christians has been properly discussed I, I, i'm not sure but i haven't i have enjoyed the interplay between you guys very much cool 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 it was a riveting conversation john richards where can we find your stuff at we thought productions channel and I've now got a producer. So nice. in, in the future, yeah, yeah, it's it's Swedish Steve who's come on board and it is performing fantastically. So it means I can focus on my guest and you know, have a, a decent conversation without having to try to do multitasking. Right, you know? right, right. right. Yeah. I can tell you, doing one man video production and interviewing is actually very complicated. And so yeah, no, the yeah. fact that someone's handling it on their own just makes things yeah. so much more yeah. interesting for you to stay focused. Could you imagine if late night TV, the, the guy who's doing the interviews with like Shirley Theron and stuff is like flipping yeah. the switches on the cameras at the same time too. Yes. It's like, yeah. it's very good <laughs> to have someone just manage that for you. Yeah. That, that's what you have to try to do. But I'd like to flag up the fact that I'm starting a new show next oh. week, which is global atheist news review. So Unlike Global Atheist News itself, which is meant to be impartial, not mm. to have any opinions, but just to, to, to report facts, mm. this show, this follow-up show, will have opinionated people, a panel of people, who will give their reactions to the items that were in the news that week. Oh, get me on that. That's, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, where yeah, I want to be. Right on that too. Thank yeah. you. Um, yeah. um, it'll, it'll go out live at um, British time, half past six in the evening. So work that out to, on a Sunday, work that out to whatever it is where you live in your time zones. So okay. you also may Sunday. consider this as a third scheme, John Richards. I follow a deaf news channel on YouTube. My mom's hard of hearing. And so it keeps yeah. me engaged with like matters yeah. that go on with the deaf community as yeah. someone who can hear and like yeah. wants to support the deaf community. Yeah. I can yeah. see like, oh, these are the things that they're talking about. These are the things they care about. These yeah. are their you know, people, their topics of choice, but they also have a follow-up show called uh, Deaf Bing, which is 
BSL isn't the same as ASL, so unfortunately, no. I can't understand exactly. <laughs> You're saying, but I appreciate yeah, yeah. it. But uh, yeah. the Deaf Bing is like the follow-up show, and then they have Deaf Shorts, where it's like clips from oh, yeah. their their funny outtakes or whatever. They put it yeah. up on YouTube Shorts, and it's a great way mm -hmm. to just stay remind being that there's great content yeah, being yeah. produced. Well, here's a way yeah. to do it. You've, you've given me the idea of getting a signer into yeah. the show. So if you can put me in touch with, let's start with American Sign Language, somebody who will come on the show, just uh, muted, but to do the necessary translation for the deaf. Interesting. The gesticulations. Yes, interesting. Yes. There's a service that'll do that for you. Anyway, Larry, we are, we can we talk. are running out of time. Sorry, we Larry. We take this conversation after the show. Uh, yeah. Anybody else have final words before we go? Yeah, yeah. Uh, just uh, um, my stuff is on YouTube on my channel, Mind Pirate, M I N D P Y R A T E. Um, as much as possible, I try to uh, stream this live on Sundays at which is now 7 a.m. Uh, thank goodness uh, it looks like the uh, daylight saving time thing is coming to an end. Uh, we shouldn't have it next year. So. Mm. Um, I'm looking Standard forward to that. Yeah, so check me out Standard if you like my stuff. If you like my stuff, uh, click and subscribe. Thank you. Cool. Larry, take us out. Okay. My content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button for a radio show archives, atheist songs, many articles on the subject. My YouTube channel can be found by searching for Doubter5 or Larry Rhodes. And of course, my book is available on Amazon atheism what's it all about thank you for joining us on the digital free thought radio hour uh if you're watching this on youtube be sure to like and subscribe remember everybody is going everybody to somebody, is going else's, somebody else's hell, hell. Yes. that's right and the time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real until then don't sweat it enjoy your life and we'll see you next week say bye everybody bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. <laughs>